You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And here we are. This is Mike Lodge. I'm glad that you have joined me. I always like coming to these podcasts, and I like talking with you and sitting back, having a cup of coffee, thinking about what's happening during the day, evening, whenever we're awake, whenever we're alive. <laughs> Listen, you know what? I'm I'm frustrated, and I want to tell you why I'm frustrated. frustrated. And it's because we have a president who is totally ignoring what's happening in Cuba. He is stopping boats from leaving Miami and going over to Cuba and delivering water and food and medication and whatever else they need. He's stopping that. He has told the Coast Guard to stop those boats from going over. Now, these people have collected this stuff by themselves. They have bought this material to give to the Cuban people as they as they march and protest and are trying to take back their nation. And listen, if you are Cuban, I am with you. If you're listening to me in Cuba, I am with you. My prayers are with you. My heart is with you. Every part of me is with you because I know what freedom is and I want you to have it. I want you to understand that this is a big responsibility, this freedom thing. And once you get it, you have the responsibility of providing freedom to every single Cuban that's in that nation. And listen, the Cubans here are marching on the streets for you. They are protesting. They are upset because Biden is doing nothing. Nothing. He's sending money to Nicaragua, which I understand the Nicaraguan army has been sent over to Cuba to, to, to fight you down. Don't give up. Remember, socialist nations always fail at some point in time. And you have the ability to take back your nation. And I am with you every step of the way. Every American is with you. I wish that you could see what's happening in Miami and in Palm Beach and all parts of of Florida as they are marching in the streets and protesting in support of you. So don't ever think that you're alone because there are Americans here on this side of the ocean. We're only about 90 miles away from you. So I want you to know that our, our that, that the spirit of support for Cuba is there. However, the Biden administration is not. The Biden administration is totally not saying one single thing in support of the Cuban people. He's not saying anything in support of of supporting freedom and democracy in Florida. Nothing. Instead, he's playing politics because, unfortunately, we have socialists in our nation right now trying to take control of our government. Now, uh, there's a lot of you that are, that are out there saying, why don't you just stick to business? Well, and, and why don't you just stick to business and mediation? Because that's what you do as a job. Well, listen, when you feel strong enough, when you see individuals suffering, when you see people who can't get medication, they cannot get food, they cannot get water. I was just watching a video that came in to me of them waiting in lines, long, long lines, just trying to get a piece of bread. Long lines trying to get some water for their families to survive. And Biden is blocking just the basic necessities to get to them. Now, here's the problem. You see, the, the, the sanctions that we have against Cuba, it does not cover food, it does not cover medication, it does not cover stuff like that. That's not covered. However, the, the government of Cuba has said we are not going to accept it. Listen, we have tons and tons of stuff that's waiting to go into Cuba, especially out of here in Florida. We have tons and boats and ready to go. But it's the Cuban government that says no. And they also say no to freedom. So understand that once you have won your freedom, your lives are going to be so much better. 
Now, we in America, we're trying to fight the same socialist ideology in our government. We have members in our Congress, members in the White House. Even our president has socialist beliefs. The problem that we have now is that these individuals remember <laughs> that Kamala Harris and AOC, Congresswoman AOC, they all stood before the American people and they said amnesty should be granted to those of political turbulence. They should not stop those individuals to be able to come to America if they are being politically crucified. But you see, the problem is they never thought that this would happen to Cuba. Because you see, Kamala Harris, AOC, Senator Bernie Sanders, President Joe Biden, they believe in the socialist way. And that's what they want on America. That's why you see so many... You see one-sided things happening. You see the Republicans and the American people saying, we need to support Cuba. And on the other side, the Democratic side, they remain silent. They don't care. That's why I have always told you. Remember in America, we had this big situation of dreamers. And remember the Republicans, I mean not the Republicans, but the Democrats said, we are going to do something for those dreamers. Listen, I am old and we're still waiting for something to happen. For the dreamers, nothing happened. Because it's a political situation that they believe that socialism is the right way to run the government. And socialist governments always fail. The people of those nations. It happens every single day. Look, you can see what's happening in Cuba right now. With the barbaric treatment of individuals on the streets as the police beat them down and shoot them. And some have died. We have a bad president. We have a president who does not care about a nation that's 90 some miles off the border of our nation who is in trouble, who is in need, who is in need of food and water and shelter and medications. We have a heartless president that sits there in the White House and does nothing to help the Cuban people. We have a situation that America is also in trouble. We are in big time trouble because we have politicians who want to make everything political instead of thinking, what do the people need? How can we help the American people? How can we help the Cuban people? How can we help those who are in need? Instead, they build all these ties with, with, with characters that we should not even be doing business with. We should not be doing business with Iran. We should not be doing business with Nicaragua. We should not be doing business with dictators around this world that we know of. We should not be involved in places that, that they do not understand what democracy is about. It should not be in those countries. Instead, we have a president who is trying to be as political as possible, as socialist as possible, and ignore the cries of help from Cuba. So Cuba, listen to me. And Cubans around the state of Florida and around the United States, the American people are with you. They're with you in prayer, in in heart, in everything else, in spirit for those individuals in Cuba who are suffering at this moment, who are fighting for their freedom. We are there. We are with you. Our spirit is there. Know that we are supporting you. And I apologize for a president who does nothing. Who does nothing. The other thing I wanted to talk about You know, we've had so many bad policies coming out of the the White House and also out of Congress. 
This overspending of money, what has it done? It has driven up inflation. You see, when you just have a Band-Aid to help out, then people are not going back to work and working full-time and putting money back into the economy. You have stagflation. When you have inflation going up, when you have inflation going up, which it's doing right now, it hurts the American people. It creates more taxes that you're paying now. Higher sales tax, higher property taxes, higher higher everything. That your taxes are being driven up. Inflation creates the cost of living to go up, to put gas in your car, to buy food, to buy medication, to buy anything that you need for the household to be able to live has gone up. Now, I was listening to the Fed chairman today, and he says he doesn't know what's going to happen yet because no one knows what kind of inflation this is. Well, inflation is when prices go up. Listen, I did a poll a few weeks ago. And I asked individuals on, in my poll, it was on LinkedIn, and, and most of the individuals that are there are attorneys, they're HR people, they're business people, there's all kinds. I've got 11,000 followers on, on LinkedIn. So I asked the question, will you raise your fees for 2021? Yes, no, not sure. So, 74% reported they were going to raise their fees. The rest were going to do it in 2022. I've had to raise my fees. I said this so many times the other day. I've had to raise my fees. Because I've got to make up for the revenue that I have lost, and I have got to keep up with the inflation that is hitting me. I have to survive. And so does all these all of these other businesses who have been shut down for a year and a half and, and were just barely starting to get back into the rhythm of things. I've had to raise my fees. So when I have to raise my fee and the accountant has to raise their fees and your tax practitioner has to raise his fees or her fees and you go to the grocery store and those costs of buying an orange or an avocado or uh, chunky chicken soup, whatever it is, those fees are going up. Why? Because gases have the gas ha- prices have gone up, and that creates transportation costs to get that food to your store. So everything goes up. Gas taxes go up because you have to pay more. Food prices go up, so the sales and use tax goes up. Everything gets affected by bad business policy or bad political policy. And the problem is is that businesses are sitting here because we do not know what Biden is going to do next. How is it going to affect my business, my corporation, my LLC, my S-Corp? They don't know what Biden is going to do, so they put everything on pause. Pause on spending, pause on buying capital equipment, pause on expanding their business. It's on pause because they don't know if I add another employee or or two employees, what is that going to do to my payroll? Am I going to be mandated to pay that $15 an hour fee? We don't know what Biden administration economic plan is for the nation except to raise taxes. That's the only thing we know. So we're in a situation where we are in limbo as businesses. So inflation is hitting us. And the Fed chairman says he doesn't know how much longer that this that this inflationary time is going to last. Each month, it keeps going up. We've gone up three months in a row over this last, last year. We've gone up over 5% 
from this time last year. Well, six percent. I can't remember what it is, but we've gone up. So we, when we have a continued inflationary time, we have a continued economic problem for the American people. When government continues to print money, continues to spend money that are only short-term plans, and the American people are not being able to get back into work, and the participation rate of individuals in work is not strong enough, we have an economic plan. We have inflation. We have an employment situation. The employment rate went up this last month. So, what do we do? Well, we have to be good stewards. We have to be good individuals. And we have got to plan our own personal finances on a daily basis. Get your journals out. Track your expenses. Track the income that's coming in. And you got to be more proactive in this. You just cannot get yourself into debt. The other question that is coming to play is, once all, all of these moratoriums go off the book on real estate and rentals, what is going to be the default rate of individuals on their mortgages? And I've heard some numbers out there that incline to say that it's going to be very high. Once that hits the economy, that puts us into a tailspin downward. If we have a tremendous amount of defaults on loans, we're going to have a we are going to have a problem. Banks become more cautious and stop lending. Some default on their own financial issues. One of the things that I heard this morning in that testimony is each bank, each financial institution is supposed to put together a will. And that will tells everybody if they fail, how will they plan their failure and how will they make it so that it's not difficult on the individuals? So that means that banks are prepared. Now, they have to update this will every year. Now the Fed wants to do it every, I think it's four or five years. can't remember. But that will is very important because that tells us how strong and how planned that bank is. So the Federal Reserve has a lot of responsibility at the moment to curb in this inflation, but they don't know what kind of inflation it is. <laughs> no one can explain the inflation. They know, I, I think they really do know what it is, because everybody has said, even in government, they have said, if government continues to spend money and print money, inflation goes up. Because there's a cost to doing that. So inflationary goes up. So we, the fingers all point back to government and to Congress especially. They have, what is it, almost a $4 billion spending plan, That's a budget that's coming out this next week, I guess, in the Senate and the Congress. The problem is, is that how are they going to pay for it? Well, they print more money. They put more money out into the economy that has nothing to back it up. So the 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 value of the dollar dollar goes down. We can't buy more overseas because the dollar goes down so we can buy less. The economic impact of what these other countries that are buying into our treasury that becomes into a sticky situation and so no one is talking about okay we have inflation how are we going to deal with inflation and the again the the finger points back to government and it points back to the congress see they don't think there's anything wrong with spending more and more tax money but every time they spend that money, our debt goes up. Because at some point in time, they've got to take out more debt. 
So our debt of the, the national debt keeps continue to rise and climb. And again, the fingers point back to Congress. You see, when you're running the government based on social agenda, if you want to call it that, or political social agenda, where they're trying to meet all of these things of taking care of climate change and everything else, it dilutes the need and the focus on what is truly needed to get this country back up and running. So if you look at the transportation bill, the transportation bill should be focused on infrastructure items only, not on social issues, but on infrastructure only, the water, the electrical grid, the internet, the the roads, the highways, the uh, other types of transportation modes that we have. Those have got to be improved and, and cleaned up because that's what keeps the com- the, the country moving. But see, what they do is they take this bill and then they include a whole bunch of other things for Planned Parenthood, for all of this stupid grants that mean nothing to count how many legs a spotted poo-poo head has. I don't, I don't know. I'm just making that up. Sorry. <laughs> but that's what they do. They include all this nonsense in these bills. And then pretty soon, instead of only spending $2 billion, you've spent $5 billion. Instead of spending $2 trillion, you spent $5 trillion. Instead of thinking what is actually needed and what needs to be focused on, they want to include every one of their pet peeves or their pet projects into that bill. That's why I hate when they, when they do this legislation. Every time that they enter a bill, let's say the bill is on truck driving, <laughs> The, they include stuff in there for seashells and and bumblebees and they just include all this nonsense stuff that is pork that just drives up the cost of doing government business and drives up the need for more and more tax dollars. So then what happens is that we start seeing tax rates go up because of bad government management, bad government spending. So we have an issue with our government not thinking about the needs of the American people, but what is more important is their own political agenda drive. And that's where we stand today. It was interesting interesting to listen to Mr. Powell, the chairman of the uh, Federal Reserve, and he wanted, I could tell that he wanted to respond to certain questions, but he, but he can't because the Federal Reserve cannot get involved with what Congress does. Federal Reserve has to deal with what Congress has done. They have to deal with whatever bill that comes out that's going to spend more money because that affects the overall economy and the overall implications of what is required by the Federal Reserve to respond to these issues. I I could tell that he wanted to answer, but he just could because that is not his legal responsibility to tell Congress what they should and should not do, do what they should and should not do. Now he should be able to do that because he's in control of the Federal Reserve. And he should be able to tell them if you do this, this is what's going to happen. You see, no one's telling them except for economists and politicians and uh, business people and everybody else. We're telling them what's going on and what they should not do. But they don't listen because they've got a political agenda. And that political agenda overwrites everything that is needed for the American people and what is needed to stimulate this economy. But they're focusing... Congress is focusing on on money spending ideas that does not help the economy. It makes it worse. It creates and drives inflation. So, 
that's my that's my lecture for the day because I'm so fed up with what the Biden administration is doing with Cuba and also the, our national economy. And we have to really pay attention to this. You and I, as Americans, as citizens of this nation, we have to pay attention to what Biden is doing to our nation, what the Congress is doing to our nation. We have to pay attention. And we've got to take back control because they have gone too far, too far in a direction that creates more debt for America, creates more inflation for you and I, creates higher taxes on everyone in the United States, not just the millionaires. It affects every one of us. That's my lecture for the day. Listen, if you have any comments, if you have, uh, if you like my content, hey, go to www. Let me try it again. www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. And if you like my content, leave me a note. Send me a question or a res- remark or anything. Send it to info, I-N-F-O, at Lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com. And it will get to me, and I promise you, if if it's a question, I'll try and answer it. If I don't know it, I will find you the answer. So that's it for the day. Pray for Cuba. Pray for the United States. Pray that our government leaders actually do something for the people of Cuba. And for those of you who are trying to do something for Cuba, if you're trying to get water and milk and everything else over to Cuba in your own boat, Listen, you are in my prayer constantly. This is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye. This podcast is produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content.